Hello everybody and thanks for watching the video. Today I want to talk about 10 gigabit network and why you might want to consider it for your network. If you want to know more about what it takes and how I implemented it, stay tuned for the rest of this video. And as always, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notifications icon so you'll be notified of future content. Before we start on the specifics, I want to give you an overview of my network topology and kind of discuss what I'm trying to achieve. One of the main reasons I wanted to upgrade key parts of my network was to eliminate bottlenecks. And basically the reason I want to eliminate bottlenecks is because I don't store any local data on any of the systems. So all the data is really stored on NAS units centrally. I really wanted to be able to accomplish easier and faster moving of larger files, whether it be movies or zip files or a variety of other large large format files that I need to get from point A to point B. I want to be able to rip movies directly to my NAS um, from another computer through the network. And of course, there's a lot of backup going on. So from NAS to NAS, from client to NAS, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I've got my backup going in multiple different directions. So I wanted to be able to pipe all that through the network as quickly as possible. And so that really prompted me to look for better network performance. Now, if we go back a couple years ago, 10 gigabit performance was kind of expensive. Um, it was a little prohibitive, not a lot of options out there. Um, you had to pay quite a bit of money. And truthfully, it's still kind of expensive and probably will remain for quite some time. However, since it does a nice job with backwards compatibility, it's kind of nice to think about the future and start replacing when the time comes piece by piece until you can kind of put together, you know, at least the critical systems in your network under 10 gigabit. So I won't get too much into the wiring um, because I've done a separate video on CAT6, CAT7 cabling. So for you to take a look at. So what I'd like to do now is to kind of get into uh, just an overview of what I have here. What you're looking at is a chart here, of my basic network configurations. There's probably uh, an item or two missing, but for the most part, it kind of covers most of what I have. Um, for all practical purposes, the network is showing that I actually have um, several parts to my network there the first thing is the um, I've kind of tried to color code this to make it make sense a little bit the red lines basically indicate my primary network um, one gigabit primary network the um, dark lines or the black dark blue lines actually is the color they are um, are actually a physically separate network that I use for other parts of the house. And I can get into more into why that is at some other time, but basically I've got a separate physical network for uh, security reasons to isolate two rooms of the house for the rest of the family um, away from anything that goes on to my network. Um, and yes, it can be done with a VLAN, but because it was easier for me to do it with physical switches and they were isolated into separate rooms, it was actually easier to go this route. And then I also have um, some IoT VLANs that I use to isolate my IoT devices. And lastly is the 10 gigabit section. Now that's actually attached to my primary network and that's kind of what I want to discuss today. And those are indicated in the green lines. In my office are two 10 gigabit switches. The primary switch is the QNAP QSW1208C, which is actually a 12 port switch um, that comprises of eight combo ports and four dedicated SPF plus ports. And that's basically the, at the epicenter of my network. Tied to that is, and clear on the other side of the room, is a QNAP QSW3081C. And I use that basically to attach, to provide a 10 gigabit feed um, and attach my computer and my test computer, which is an illustrated on here, to the 10 gig network. So um, following down a little further, you'll see that I have actually a dedicated VM slash Plex server, which is also piped into the 10 gig network, and that's tied directly to the 12 port QNAP. So, um, and that's basically on the rack. So in that office area, the, the, the main thrust is to connect these systems together to the two 
QNAP units, um, which I have two NAS units. One's a TS-453B and one's a TVS-951X, which has native 10 gigabit. The 453 actually has a PCI Express slot, so you can drop your whatever kind of card you want to drop in there. I opted for a 10 gigabit card. So basically, that's the flow of the office. So this connects my Plex server, my main system, my test system, um, all to those two particular NASs that are t that support 10 gigabit. So moving down over into the family room, I have a 10 gigabit feed um, through some Cat7 cabling over into the family room where I've used a second QSW3081C, which is a basically a total of three 10 gigabit ports, one being a combo port. The other two being SPF plus, so you have to use a transceiver. And I've got that piping another NAS that I have over there and providing a lot of connections for one gigabit connections, which I'll show you here in a second. And that leaves me one port for future expansion if I add something else that supports 10 gigabit. So basically that com completes the topology of my 10 gigabit connections. The, as you can see, the main thrust was not so much from computer to computer or computer to you know an Xbox or anything like that. It's really targeted at getting to and from the NAS um, with all the critical systems. So I have a total of three NASs that support 10 gigabit, you know, basically three computers. And those are the ones that are intended to uh, basically take advantage of that faster speed so that I can do my backups, I can do my rips, I can do my have a central store location and be able to access directly, even um, doing video editing, music, anything that you do. I do directly off the NAS because of that extra performance. It's virtually like working on your own desktop. So that's kind of a quick overview of the topology of my network. So then I want to talk a little bit about the uh, parts that I used and then um, kind of give you an overview of, you know, how the performance is. So basically to accomplish all of this, um, and obviously your mileage may vary depending on your particular configuration, this required three NICs. Uh, to be put into three different systems. So I looked for some low cost 10 gigabit NICs. I have done some reviews on um, in some past videos on some 10 gig NICs. And I've also found recently some uh, Intel compatible um, 10 gigabit NICs that were pretty well built and have performed really well so far. So I've also picked up a couple of those that allowed me to connect all the computers pretty easily. Um, as I mentioned, the, the two of the NASs have built in 10 gigabit. The third one, I used a, a QNAP plug-in card um, just to assure compatibility. There, It would take basically any card, but I wanted to make sure that there was no issues and drivers were built in, etc. So I added the, in the TS-453, I added the um, a 10 gigabit PCI slot. Um, of course, you've got, depending on the length that you're going, uh, how far you're going and how many things you're connecting, um, you may have to rerun some cable. If you're running CAT 6A, you don't have an issue. If you're running CAT 7, you don't have an issue. And if you're running CAT 6, um, you possibly don't have an issue. You will have to test it and see how well it performs. The uh, CAT 6 will work in most cases if the runs are less than say 25 to 30 meters. So if you're reasonably close by, like within a room, you can get by with using CAT6. I've done several tests to validate that and saw no difference whatsoever. That ch story changes as your cables get longer and longer. And the primary difference between 6A and 7 is really just in the shielding. 7 has double shielding, 6A has single shielding, and there's no shielding on 6. So you're, um, you know, you're you're going to pick up more noise as you get longer and longer. So I wouldn't use Cat 6 for, you know, if you're going to go halfway across your house. I would go ahead and invest in 6A or 7 and just uh, check out my video on basically crimping and putting together um, Cat 7, which is in basically having the futz with all the shielding and stuff. 
Okay, getting back to uh, the parts list, I also, in addition to my NIC cards, I've also used, um, as I mentioned, two of the QNAP QSW-308s, you know, one in my office, one in the family room. And then, of course, at the heart of all of it is the QNAP 12 port, which is the QS12088C, which has 12 10 gigabit ports, eight of them are combo ports, which is really, really helpful and can save you a ton of money if you're running RJ45 uh, type uh, copper to it. So it saves you from having a, to put a $40 transceiver into each slot. So it, it's a great piece of work, highly recommended. I've had nothing but, but good results with it, good, great performance, um, very quiet, all those wonderful things. So a lot of times, you know, I want to get into kind of why I picked some of these components because, you know, it does, uh, there are other choices out there and you can choose whatever you like. You can do the Microtech, you can do, you know, some Netgear, you can do, there are other options you can choose that um, can be, you know, basically competitively priced. Um, the reason I picked QNAP is they were one of the first ones out there with a lower cost switch and they kept it real simple in terms of value. If you look at the pricing of the 1208, for example, um, you don't see too many 12 port switches out there that are combo ports. You can find eight to 12 port switches out there, but most of them are strictly SFP plus connectors, which means you've got to put in either a different cable or, or invest in decently expensive transceivers which basically drives the cost of your switch quite a bit higher. So the 1208 was really a bargain in my opinion. Um, in terms of the, since I had really good luck with the 1208 when QNAP released, you know, the, um, when QNAP released the uh, QSW3081C, um, I just had to try it. And after I went ahead and bought one for testing reasons, I kind of fell in love with it and decided to buy another one for uh, my entertainment center. So basically, um, those are the primary reasons why I selected these particular components. Um, if I had to do it again today, I'd probably pick the same parts. That's how pleased I am with everything that I've done so far. Um, and I guess the first question that might come up for people is, um, was it worth it in terms of the performance? And the one word answer to that is yes, absolutely. I mean, to get roughly five to ten times the performance through your network is definitely worth it. Now, obviously, you can't go across the board. It, it is price prohibitive still. But as you start building out in pairs, you know, as you start picking up your first switch and then adding, um, you know, NIC cards or, you know, taking advantage of support of your NAS units, it becomes um, pretty exciting to watch that grow out so you don't actually have to do everything at once. The um, other thing is the switch, even though the switch is a 10 gigabit switch, it is compatible with five and two and a half. Some of the motherboards nowadays, are, um, you're able to get two and a half gig switches or two and a half gig NICs, some of which are built in that'll give you that extra boost in performance um, will run effectively over cat six cable and um, take advantage of that 10 gig switch. So since the switch will support, you know, lower, it'll step back and support the lower bandwidth. So if you can't afford to make that jump all the way to 10 gig right away on everything, take advantage of it in increments, take advantage of it in the two and a half gig um, NICs, um, which are considerably cheaper. So um, that's basically an overview. I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. Um, for the all practical purposes, I'm done right now. Um, it will probably expand into one more room here shortly, which would probably be the living room to uh, attack um, the systems that are in there, provide a little bit more bandwidth, and mostly uh, to address the um, my security system. So. I um, am very pleased with how it turned out and it was definitely worth the investment um, over the last many months that I've been picking up pieces here and there. Obviously this isn't for everyone. I'm not suggesting this is the way you have to go. I'm just sharing with you what happened and with my experiences 
you know, by doing this, and it's turned out very positive for me. So anyway, I hope that you found this useful and give you a better idea of, of how you can um, slowly implement 10 gigabit in your home. Take a look and see whether or not it's worthwhile to you. For me, it's been fantastic and there's really not looking, no looking back at this point. Anyway, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notifications icon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.